ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Shit's about to hit the fan. Welcome to Unsanctioned Thursdays on Wrestling with Freddy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unsanctioned Thursdays, the show created for you. Created actually by you as well. So thank you. And let's start the show. Jeff die how are you sir it's thursday it's unsanctioned how are you feeling today sir i'm feeling uh good but a little torn the passing of terry funk and the passing of bray wyatt has been yeah. heavy on everybody so besides that i'm feeling really good um we will get in to the losses that the wrestling community has experienced uh but first we do want to talk a little bit more aew they just broke the record in London, England, Wembley Stadium, eighty over 80,000 people bought tickets, over 90,000 people in attendance. It's just insane numbers. And they do this weird thing where they do all out, like right after it. It's in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, the card announced so far, we have a TNT championship match with Luchasaurus, with Christian, versus Darby Allen. And this story they've been trying to develop for a little while now, as well as they can. Anytime Christian's involved in a promo, it's going to be a good thing. And Darby Allen, who I don't think is great on the mic, is great in the ring. And people love him the way they love Jeff Hardy in WWE back in the day. Any thoughts on this match or not yet? Uh, no thoughts. I think it'll be good. I think I actually don't mind Darby on the mic. I don't think that's his strong suit, but I, I don't think it's bad necessarily. Yeah, I'm, I'm more interested to see what Christian still has than anything else but uh and i love luchasaurus christian's the man giant. dude there's a little bit of an age difference between all these spellers it'll be interesting to yeah watch. man i'm excited for it dogs. for sure also on the card just announced we have powerhouse hobbs who i like a lot will hobbs versus miro who i love to death this matchup if you're not familiar with it the call out sort of started on their saturday night show the aew's collision show with Hobbs talking about how he's had some losses in his career and it's time to turn things around. And the next chapter in the book of Hobbs, he was carrying this Bible, is redemption. And the only redemption out there is the Redeemer, and that's Miro. And he's called Miro out. And uh, they've had some beef back and forth, some ambush tactics, and now they're going to wrestle. Jeff, these are two humongous dudes, as Big E from WWE would say, meaty men slapping meat. I know you're ready for this match. I love both these guys. So Miro was really popular as Rusev for a time. There was a time when he mm-hmm. was just so over in WWE. Miro, when he was Rusev, had a huge pop when he or a huge moment when he was over at WWE. There's no one like popular or no one more popular for like people a love it. it was really, and I loved him. I still love. Him. And then it just felt like he kind of disappeared yeah. from relevance in wrestling, which bothered me. So I'm super happy that Miro is going over so well in AEW. I'm a big fan. Powerhouse Hobbs, I don't know much about, but he's a giant. And you know that I like giants and I like cool, strong dudes. And so I'm excited for this match for for all the obvious Jeff Dye reasons. Yeah, Hobbs is hella buff. I'm only only hip to him because I fell in love with Ricky Starks. And that was like his running mate back, uh, back in the day. So that's how I got hip to Hobbs. And then he's just sort of been slowly developing with the small opportunities being given, but he hasn't fumbled the ball. So, yeah, so we got that match coming up. Then we have the women's TBS championship match. Chris Statlander, the vanquisher of Jade Cargill versus Ruby Soho. I love Ruby. I haven't loved the Chris Statlander run yet. Granted, they haven't given her a reason to fight any of these girls. She's just been fighting them, so it's not her fault. But it's hard to get excited for a match when there's not a story for it when you're 47 years old, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to <laughs> go. Yeah, we'll, see, we'll see. It's a funny way to put it. And finally, and this is just what they've announced so far, you guys. Kenny Omega versus Kanosuke Takashita. They are really pushing this Japanese kid. And he looks better every single friggin' match. He is strong, fast, big, good-looking dude. And they are pushing him hard. These guys over the roster must love him because they're taking really good care of this guy. He's getting big wins, big pins. I think he might actually win this match versus Kenny Omega. Or maybe this will be the, the first time he takes a loss and uh, still look good doing it. But I think they're trying to build him as a as a legit heel with Don Callis in his back pocket. And I think they're actually doing an okay job. Again, limited opportunity, but he hasn't fumbled. And he looks like a killer out there, man. Everybody sells huge for him. 
I don't know why we've seen such less of Kenny Omega since we started becoming big AE, AEW guys. You know, because our podcast has always been very like WWE heavy for obvious reasons, but AEW is the new dog. They're the new kid in town. So once we started watching AEW, all I ever heard, but when I wasn't watching AEW, was Kenny Omega this, Kenny Omega that, Kenny Omega. And now that I'm now that I'm watching AEW, I don't see a lot of Kenny Omega. And so I'm hoping there's some sort of reason for that. And I'm hoping that it changes and we start seeing like a lot of it. And, or maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe people are hearing that. They watch AEW all the time. They don't agree. But I don't feel like we get as much Kenny Omega as we used to. It's all the MJF show. I think Kenny was winning so much that when he went away, he went away for like a year because he had a lot of injuries that just needed to heal up. That when he came back, I think he's more about putting other people over this time around and getting small wins here and there. So he's not looking like a weak character, but he's really been focused hard on making other people look good. And so maybe that's it. Maybe he's just more of a veteran pro than you and I even realize. Jeff, let's take a sadder turn. There were two losses. Terry Funk, who lived a long life, and Wyndham Rotunda, known as Bray Wyatt, who lived a short life. I only met Terry once, and he was an absolute prize of a man and made me laugh a lot in the 20 minutes that we hung out backstage at a Monday Night Raw. But Wyndham, I knew. And this one was out of the blue. Another wrestler texted me. And Bray's father, Mike, had texted them, and they said, hey, Bray just passed. And my wife was on, like, a conference call, and she saw my whole face, like, change colors. And she was like, hey, hold on a second. She goes, are you okay? And I told her, I, I'll, you know, I'll be all right. I just have to, I got to go think. And I, I went outside with my dogs and was just like, I couldn't even believe it because he's so young. And I don't want to talk about, like, cause of death or anything because even if it's public, that shit's still private to me. But God damn, man, just such a creative young man. I had planned a lot of my wrestling promotion around him before he re-signed with WWE, and he and I had been in discussions for that. Just a real special human being from what I knew of him. And we weren't close friends, but we were working acquaintances. And I know respected one another. There was a movie I was thinking about doing that had a role in it for him that he liked a lot, playing the role of a carny. So yeah, man, he'll be missed. He was a, the last attraction wrestler in the business with The Undertaker being gone. And uh, there's nobody that can fill that void, unfortunately. Those are my brief thoughts on Bray, Jeff, if you want to take over. I've said on this podcast a million times, the best actor that wrestling has ever had. When it comes down to it, wrestling is theater and wrestling is acting and wrestling is storytelling as much as it is wrestling, as much as it is the physical part. And Bray had everything, like a classic five-tool player. But I think when it comes to storytelling and acting, there's no one there was no one better. I always give him, Kevin Owens, and as of late, MJF credit for just being like the best storytellers in the ring and the most realistic acting as far as like, it's just so good. And um, I was, obviously, I wasn't friends with him or anything, but I got to meet him a few times. We went to Hollywood Horror Nights together. He would come to the comedy store. Oh, that's so cool. I, I remember every moment I've ever spent with him because <laughs> it wasn't much, but like I'm such a super fan of him and he was such a cool guy. And um, so there are special people like that in the world where you, you remember every second that you spent with them because they're just such memorable and cool people. Like I said, we weren't friends or anything, but it sucks for wrestling. And you guys are wrestling fans who probably never met him. And it just sucks for everybody involved that we uh the world that we live in the wrestling world we live in has lost such an awesome you know it's the way the world felt when kobe died this kind of was my kobe yeah you know like it was like it was it's hard, just kind of hard to believe even if you never met him or knew him or whatever it just doesn't seem fair that at 36 we could lose a guy that is just so cool and special and uh it, it's very hard to i don't think i don't think most people have even even dealt with it like and most people are still like it's still hard to believe that a guy with a family, he's young, his young family. So anyways, from two big wrestling fans of Bray Wyatt, we love you, buddy. And uh, it's it's a terrible and sad thing. It's, it seems unfair, but who knows? We love you. Well said, sir. Bakersfield, California. If you're sad about Bray Wyatt too and you need some laughs, go see Jeff die this weekend. Come hang out. Come have a drink. Come have a laugh. I'll be there uh, this weekend. 
You guys, thank you so much for listening to this show each week. The bonus content only exists because you guys asked for it. And when we gave it to you guys, showed up and showed out. And we appreciate y'all the way that Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins appreciate Bobby Lashley coming into their life. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you guys next Wednesday. On behalf of my awesome co-host, Jeff Dye, I'm Freddie Prince Jr. And this was Unsanctioned Thursdays. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.